week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast. I'm Jerlyn Canan, and uh, we begin the show by looking back on the weekend's action in the FBD Insurance Championship. Um, the Junior Aid Championship, we had a semi-finals on Saturday in McDonough Park in Nina. It was Moneygall against Kildangan. Moneygall with a comprehensive win over Kildangan in the end, uh, 2.24 to 2.5. They led a half-time 2.11 to 2 points, and Kildangan with two goals in the second half. But it was never going to be enough against a very good money goal side. Uh, Caitlin Tracy was on fire. She scored 12 points, nine from freeze and three from play. Uh, captain and full forward Neve Larkin with a goal and seven points. Um, they had other uh, standout performances from Julie Kelly at centre back. Mary Ryan was excellent in midfield. Uh, so too was Breed Ryan at centre forward. Um, they looked really good, money goal, and um, are true now to a county final where they'll play. Uh, the winners of Brian Baru's and St. Risha's. That game is happening this Sunday at 12 p.m. in the County Camogie Grounds in the RAG. Um, after Saturday's semi-final, I caught up with uh, Seamus Holkin, the manager of uh, Money Gall, and Breed Ryan and Judy Kelly and got their reaction. Joined now by Seamus Hogan, manager of the Money Gall uh, Junior A team. Seamus, you're in a county final. Comprehensive victories there, 2.24 to 2.5. You must be pleased oh very pleased yeah very pleased by the by the work rate of every single one of the team subs include even in training everyone put in the effort and it pays off today and i remember being at the county final last year and probably thought maybe over nine to bit on red team for scores certainly not this year massive uh, uh, uh contribution there by like caitlin tracy neve lark and brie ryan you know your, your forwards in particular are looking really impressive Oh, they are, yeah, but it's the distribution of the ball from the back line also as well in midfield that makes these. But um, Caitlin is super, top class, can't fault her anyway. But she puts it in at training as well and also, as you can see here today, on the field. And obviously great to have experienced players like Sir Julie Kelly, Breed Ryan, Mary Ryan there, I suppose, backbone of that team as well. Oh yeah, sure, Mary and backbone in the middle of the midfield, as you saw yourself today, cleaned up there in the middle of the field. Sure, Julie back this year and Breed, super players. Sure, Julie, a former Tipperary player, Breed as well. Sure, you can't fall them. Super team. And it's going to be either Brian Bruce or, or St. Risha's Feathered in the final, which he, um, that semi final happening next weekend. Uh, have you played either of them this year, or do you know much about either side? Yeah, we played Feathered there a couple of weeks ago at home, and we beat him as well. But Feathered a good side. We can't, we won't knock either of them. We played Brian Bruce in the league uh, earlier on, but we were, only, we were only starting to try and build a team for the championship. But uh, they're both of them are a very good team. I went to see uh, Brian Bruce against Ballina. They were very imp- impressive there as well. So it could be a tough final ever. Who comes over and meets us? But we'll be raring to go for it. So you're unbeaten now in a county final, but obviously when you, when you get to the final, you want to win them. Oh, of course. Everybody wants to win the final. No matter who you are, you want to win the final. But hats off to Kildang and today. They're a good team. Like the score, we, we put up great scores. We've got great score, as you said yourself there, from Kate and Neve and Breed and all the rest of them. But... Um, Killedanger were a good team, but we'll be ready no matter who we meet in the next day. And please God, we'll come out on top. Thanks very much, Seamus. Now I'm joined by uh, two of the more senior players on the Money Gall team, Bree Ryan and Julie Kelly, and they're, we're surrounded with some of the up and coming stars of Money Gall as well. <laughs> Bree, we'll start with you, and uh, you must be delighted with that win and back in the county final. Yeah, delighted. To be fair, uh, it's been a long time since we've had the opportunity to win the county final, so it's it's great to be back. I think it's good for the club now. <laughs> You know, the younger players coming up along have been reaching a couple of finals. I think it's good for them to see us, the adults team, get into a final now and hopefully going all the way. <laughs> yeah, and Julie, I remember talking to you after last year's county final. You were beaten uh, yeah. by Borland. Well, uh, you were in the stand that day, uh, back on the pitch. But I remember thinking you were kind of positive after the match. You, you, I suppose you saw a lot of uh, positives from the performance. Yeah, definitely, Jar. Like, serious potential with us. Like, I definitely saw it last year, especially with the younger girls who were, who were coming through and... You know, it's been a while since we've had that and a nice group have come through in the last year year or two and I suppose kind of a nice mix of what's called experience <laughs> experience and youth and um, yeah there's just a lovely mix together and we're, we're kind of hurling well but but you know what there's no trophy yet so um, you know, please God now we get over the line and the next couple of weeks we'll just um, work hard now at training for the next couple of weeks and hopefully get over the line. And is that kind of what enticed you to come back playing this year, or were you always coming back anyway? No, I was always coming back anyway, to be honest. Um, yeah, to listen, you know me now, I just, I don't know, I can't seem to give it up. But, um, and it's a busy house as well at home, so it's nice to get out. 
<laughs> a bit of escape. Um, Bree, just a word on Kiladang, and you know, I suppose they fought right to the bitter end, but you started off with the wind advantage, and you know, your forwards look very sharp from the get go. Yeah, like we're very lucky this year, we've got such a strong panel. We've got girls that have been playing right throughout the year between league and championship because we had a few injuries, so we're, we're lucky to have such a strong panel and girls fighting for places, so it's pushing, pushing everyone on. So everyone's improving, everyone's getting better with every game, and like definitely our forward play out there today was was very good, and it was great to get a good score in the first half to take a bit of pressure off then for the second half. Yeah, and in fairness, Kildare never gave up and got two goals there in the second half. Absolutely, they were they were good and tough and physical. They gave us a good game. We we'll, we feel that for a few days, I'd say. And uh, Julie, it's going to be Brian Bruce or Saint Rishas Feathered in the final. Uh, that semi final happening next weekend. Uh, is there any particular team you'd like or prefer to avoid, or do you know much about either of them? No, like we met Federer ourselves in our group game, as our final group game, and you know, they give us a tough match in money goal. Um, I know at Brian Brews, we met them in the league, so um, and they bet us in the league that day as well. And that was a tough game, so yeah, I just think, you know, listen, any fi- final is tough, no, no final is easy one, so um, and I know they're out in football, I think, this, this weekend, so I'm sure they'll be fit and they'll be raring to go. Um, any kind of team that's playing football as well are fit and kind of forward running, um, so it's, it's, it's not going to be easy one anyway. We are, we're definitely. <laughs> and just, um, I suppose, you, like, you've had a few injuries this year, you've, Raytine was out, Edwina was out, but I suppose they're all coming back and, and coming at the right time now for the final in two weeks' time. Yeah, they are, but that was one thing this year. I think every championship game we were missing you know, like a couple of regulars each time, and we always had someone, you know, like a few people in the panel to come in and t- take their place. Like in the past, we didn't have that. You know, we always kind of struggled with numbers, and we definitely have more depth in the panel this year, which is brilliant. And I, I'd say nearly everyone in the panel have gotten games this this year between the league and the championship. Um, so yeah, hopefully, I'll come to final, we'll have our last couple of people back from injury. Um, yeah, so f- fingers crossed, or they'll have a full panel to pick from. Brilliant. Thanks very much, girls. Thanks, sir. And thanks to all your supporters. <laughs> On Saturday, we also had two uh, crucial intermediate championship games. Uh, Killer One and Newport Banner Hinge played. Uh, Killer One winners there on the scoreline of two goals and 11 points to eight points. In the other game, Shannon Rovers had a big win over Tumi Vara, six goals and 14 points to two goals and six. That means uh, we now know our top four teams. Uh, there's still one game to play between uh, Care and Boerland, but unfortunately for both those sides, um, they can't qualify uh, uh, at this stage. But Boris Lee have finished top of the group. Um, Shannon Rovers are second, Newport are third, and Kilowan are fourth. So what that means is our two semi-finals for the FBD Insurance Intermediate Championship is Boris Lee versus Kilowan McDonough's and Shannon Rovers against Newport Ball and Hinge. That's going to be a double header on Saturday week. Um, in the county community grounds of Rag. Expect a massive crowd uh, for those two semi-finals and this really hotly contested intermediate championship. So that's to look forward to in two weeks' time. Um, then in the Junior B Championship, we had one semi-final on Sunday in McDonough Park and Nina. Portro had a good win over Silver Mines, 111 to five points. Um, Portro goal coming there in the first half from Michelle O'Halloran and they really kicked on after that. They led a half-time, 173. And held Silver Mines to just two points in the second half. Trisha Hadron was excellent for them at centre back. So too was Grace Mulrooney. And um, they marched now on now into a county final where they await the winners of the other semi final. Uh, McCarkey Burrs and St. Cronin's uh, of Ross Gray are in that. So uh, Port Road through to a county final. Uh, then on Sunday, we had two junior B2 semi finals. Uh, Clonty and Anacarty played out a really exciting game. Anacarty led from the start. Um, but uh, Clonty got a late goal uh, to equalise it there on full time and it went to extra time then, draw at half time of extra time and then a goal on two points from Clonty in the second half extra time meant they ran out winners on a final scoreline of three goals and 13 points to three goals and eight. A tough way for Andy Carty to lose but a great way for Clonty to win and to book their place in a county final where they will meet Shannon Rovers. Uh, in the other semi-final low scoring game, Shannon Rovers had a two point win over Tumi Vara, eight points to six. Uh, which sees them through to a county final against um, Clonty Rossmore. So a uh, chance for either of those teams to claim some silverware there after a very good campaign. And uh, we also had under 15 finals at the weekend. Uh, the under 15 development league concluded 
with a Boer Lan winning the A competition, 213 to 29 against a very good Holy Cross Bally Cal team. In the B competition, McCarthy Burris ran out 113 to seven point winners over Newport. Nina had a, a win over St. Richard's Feathered uh, in the C competition, 2 5 to 1 2. And then the previous week, or sorry, Turles then um, in the D competition lost to Temple Moore, Temple Moore winners there and a score of 5 10 to 1 6. The previous weekend, then Killer One bet Money Gall. Um, in the last of the under 15 finals so congratulations to all the winners and commiserations to all the, the runners up uh, another great uh, summer of Camogie there for the under 15s on Saturday then we had a fantastic uh, festival of Camogie um, that took place in uh, Dines Sports Ground in Care run by the Grand O'Leary and Honour Development Committee team uh, for the under 8s and 10s clubs all around the county uh, they had a blitz and they had a parade and they had a a Pie Piper, uh, loads of excitement. Kevin Handy was there for the Tipperary PR team and he put this full collection of photos and videos together for uh, the Mulgrew Report podcast. Podcast. I'm delighted to welcome uh, Bird Suhara captain and Tiberi junior goalkeeper Kira Hulahan. Uh, we're going to preview the upcoming FBD Insurance Senior County semi finals, two of them taking place this Saturday in the County Camogie Grounds in the Rag. First up is Drummond Inch and Anna Carty at 1 pm, and then Cash at King Cormacks and Clonty Ross Moore at 3 45 pm. Kira, thanks very much for joining us. No problem at all, Jar. So I suppose we'll start off with Drummond and Anna Carty and um, to me, you know, I, I suppose I don't really know what to expect from Anacarty. Obviously, they got off to a very slow start to the championship, didn't win a game in the group stages, lost uh, to Clonty, you know, 116 to 19 was a big enough defeat. Drewish and um, Nina, which I suppose was a big surprise, 112 apiece. Uh, then played drum, then the final group game, lost 212 to 17. But, you know, I suppose Betchy in, in the quarter final, which obviously shows signs that, you know, maybe they're coming right at the, at the right time and, 
How do you think they'll go against Roman Inch at the weekend? Yeah, um, I think they'll, you know, they'll definitely be underdogs in it. You know, anyone watching it would nearly just presume Rome with all their county girls. But in fairness to them, they travelled up to Kilcolman there to play us in the quarterfinal. You know, and they played well, like, you know, it was a tight game, but when it came down to it, you know, they pulled away and beat us by four points. So you know, Eilish McDonald scored two goals. Do you know, I thought they were well set up. Like, I know they mightn't have had a good group stage, but, you know, when it came to knockout, they turned it on, which is most important. And look, they'll probably, they'll probably fancy being underdogs. You know, that'll probably suit them. And, you know, I saw them in the league final this year. I was really impressed with them. You know, it was two cracking games against Roman Inch in the league final. I know that's a long time ago, but... Uh, First game was a draw, second game a draw again, went to extra time, drum eventually got over the line. But, you know, I saw plenty from Anna Carty there that I thought they'd be real championship contenders. And, you know, probably haven't seen enough now yet this year. But like you said, coming right at the right time. But you mentioned there Irish McDonald at full forward. Jean Kelly, I think, was in the other corner and Orla O'Brien in the other corner. That's a serious full forward line. And will they trouble the drum an inch full back line? Yeah, I think, you know, I know they're underdogs, but they shouldn't really fear it. You know, you're in a semi-final at the must-win match, you know. I thought, yeah, Gene Kelly, you know, they play like footballers, in fairness to them. They were pulling out the field, you know, they're all fit. They Nicole Shelley, I think, Leah Heffernan as well there, you know, that were really fit, like, taking on the ball, you know, and they were, like, they scored 214. That's good scoring, you know, that way. So, you know, I think they're well able, like, if they, you know, they've nothing to fear, like going against it in against drum like if they all you know row in together and drive at drum like drum are favorites it's on them to win it you know that way so i'd be saying to them like they're they're the underdog you know if they're once their training is going well you know and they attack them you know they've nothing to fear really and is there anyone in drum that would say who you would see as the key players for drum that i suppose anna carty would really have to to watch out for just there's probably too many now. I'd say, you know, I think they've lost seven or eight on the county teams. Do you know, probably, do you know, they've the two McGraths, the two Evisons, you know, they've Miriam and Neve Trassi. Do you know, like there's so many of them, but probably Emer McGrath, I'd say, do you know, for the backs, like to keep on her. She's when she gets the ball, like she'll head for goal every time. And in fairness, they've some amount of workers, even their backs for the Quiva, Maureen Ryan, do you know, the, the backs are solid. So, probably up to the forwards to just keep attacking. So Anna Carty, I'd say they'll have their hands full with the drum forwards. Like there's a lot of scoring forwards there. Do you know, I think Neve Ryan scored the last day, Miriam, you know, even from midfield kind of attacking. But, you know, that's their drummer, the champions for a reason, do you know, that way. But I think, um, yeah, they'll have their hands full, but they'll, they'll do their best anyway. It'll be a real test uh, for both sides and whoever comes through will definitely have earned their place in the county, in the county final. So the other uh, yeah, semi-final then, so kind of a novel pair and I don't think uh, these sides have met really. Um, you know, Cashel hadn't up seen her all that long, you know. They got to uh, county semi-final last year, lost to Drummond Inch and that, so they didn't meet Clonty in the group stages either. Um, Clonty, you know, a serious side, real contenders again, obviously, this year. Um had a very tight game with Drum in the group stages. Um, obviously lost to Drum in the last two county finals. Very close games again. But uh, this is going to be a different test for them. You know, you you play Cashel in the group stages. There was a point in it. You know, I, I know I spoke to Queen Purdue last week and she found that a really, really tough game. You know, how did you find playing against Cashel or the style and the team that they have? Yeah, do you know, you're probably used to, we're used to playing the drums in Clonoti. So, do you know, it's good to be playing against different teams. Um, I feel like if you look on paper, you probably know more of the Clonoti girls. But, like, Cashel have their fair players. Like, you know, they have a good few playing on the county teams, even on the minor team as well. I think they have two Fahi sisters. Do you know, and they're probably girls I mightn't have heard of, but... When it comes down to it, you know, they played well. They were very fast, in fairness. Their forwards, Quiva, you know, they're lightning quick getting the ball in. You know, I know Philly Fogarty was back there playing full forward, you know. So, like, she definitely probably is the sense of calm, you know, giving off the passes and talking to everyone. So, they're probably, you know, if I was say, you'd probably think Cashler are the underdogs. But they talked, they talked the group all the same. They made it straight through to the semis. You know, Clodonti have another match under their belt, but... Actually, just talking no, about that, do you think that's, an, you know, 
I was looking at drum there. They played Anacarty in the last game, bet them. But it's four weeks going to be since they played them. Anacarty had a win since then. Very hard to beat the same team twice. Is four weeks nearly, you know, too long of a break for Cashel and Drum? Will they be a bit rusty at the start, do you think? Yeah, it, you know, it, it really does depend on... Now, in fairness, Drum and Knoth, Oh, no, Drum and Cashel. Drum are probably used to having a couple of weeks off in their training. So for Cashel, it's how well are they ready now? Do you know, I'm not sure... I don't know anyone from the camp if they've been playing maybe a challenge match, you know, to keep them fresh and on their toes. But you'd hope sometimes the people who play the quarterfinals like Anna Carty and Clonote, you know, they're in the run of things. Another game, they have another win under the belt. They're probably, they could be a little bit more confident or even, you know, the first 10 minutes, they might be, might take drum and cash in a few minutes to get into it. So sometimes, you know, it's not the worst to have an extra match under your belt. Yeah, and actually, Clonoti started quite slow against her, the Sarsfields. Um, they hardly got the ball down their own end of the field for the opening 10 minutes, and Tur the Sarsfields hit them for 1 4 and a trosh in a fantastic blistering start. But, you know, you'd have to admire Clonoti. They never panicked. They, you know, got the, got the ball up the other end. Eamon Burke got a goal. Um, I think they got another one before half time from Caught the Van, and they only went in two points down, and they came out in the second half and produced a brilliant quarter um, to, uh, I suppose, you know, swing back the momentum in their favour and take control of the game. But if they were to start slow like that against Cashel, do you think Cashel has a firepower, you know, maybe to put them away? And, and you know, I, I know Turles regretted not scoring more, obviously, when they had that purple patch. But have you seen enough in the Cashel forwards to say that, you know, Clonty couldn't afford a slow start against them? Yeah, well, I think, like, they stuck with us the whole way. And when it mattered, uh, Quiver Purdue got the goal. And from then, they kicked on. And it was us at the end of our match, anyway, when we, we played them. It was us trying to, I think, ball came off the post. The goalie made a save. Do you know, so their backs held tight when it came to it. The last, the last few plays in our match was us trying to either get a goal or a point to draw the match. So, like, in fairness to Cash, like, they were well able. They stuck with us the whole way. They got a goal and they pushed on, you know, they pushed on from there then. I think they got another couple of scores like. So I think, you know, Clonoti will have to be ready for them. Now their team, Clonoti are an excellent team. But, you know, I think um, in fairness to the Cashel backs, like Sir Ryan, a few others of the girls, you know, they, they held it tight at the end when it mattered and they were under a fair bit of pressure. And you'll be familiar with um, Amy Cross and Maeve Eli Ryan. They were... Uh, played alongside you in Tipperary junior team this year. They're two, you know, key players for Cashel as well. Yeah, they are. And sure, there's Onyo Dwyer and Cream Blair as well. Like, you know, and I'd say probably, I think there's two Fatty sisters as well that were minor and Nicole Shelley as well, who played a couple of years ago with Tip. Like, so, you know, Cashel do have, you know, on paper, like they have, they've played big matches. You know, I know they might be the underdog and they're a bit younger, but they've topped the group. You know, they have the confidence of, you know, they've played well. I think, did they draw with Thurless? They beat us by a point. You know, they beat the Mines. Do you know, so they deserve to be there. So it's just all about, hopefully, they've been preparing well. And I'd say they're up for it. They'll be they'll be coming up against a very good Clonoti team. So they'll have to be, really, it's all about, it's semi-final, it's knockout. It's who performs on the day. So hopefully, they're really up for it and they're ready for a battle on Saturday. Yeah, I think it's going to be a fascinating encounter. Like you said, you know, Lily Fahi, even Grace Maloney, loads of players... Like like we've mentioned, I've played underage with Tip, have had huge success with Cashel Schools. Um, you know, obviously Cree Blair has experience with Tip Seniors, but I suppose what they are lacking is, you know, success at you know, winning a senior club county semi-final, something that Cashel have done, have proven, know how to do it. Caught the van, the Courtney Ryan's, the Claude Quirk. It's actually there are two different types of teams and two different types of players, and I suppose. You know, now Clonty have some young players like Kate Ferncombe and Lorna Ryan that would have played against these Cashel miners that I mentioned. But Cashel has some big guns there that have, you know, I can imagine Claude Quirk just like we're getting back to this final, you know, they have one eye on trying winning the county final and they're not going to let Cashel stop them. But Cashel are riding, riding the crest of a wave now and, you know, probably not used to losing games. You know, they've come right up through the ranks, junior B, junior A, intermediate, that a lot of the girls have won underage titles. And I think just having Philly Fogley in there is probably that bit of experience that they're lacking. And even Linda Grogan is a selector. She knows how to win county finals, how to win club all Ireland's, you know, with Cashel. So I think it's just going to be a fascinating encounter. And I've, it's a match I find very hard to call. What about yourself? Who do you who do you think will get over the line, Cashel or Arclonte? 
Yeah, like, do you know, you'd always be voting for the underdog. Do you know, you'd love to see, I don't know, like all the years we were playing, everyone would be voting for someone else to be in the county final. But I think it's hard to look past the penalty. Like you said, do you know, those girls have been in county finals before. Do you know, they were definitely in ones 18 or 17. I think they lost to us. You know, they've lost the last two county finals. Do you know, they only lost in, in the round match. Was it two points or a point there? Yeah, I think down in Clinton, you yeah. know. So they're not they're not far off it, you know. And a lot of those girls, I know there's a good few on the tip senior team and that, but like they'll want it as much as anyone else. Like I'm sure they're training as hard as any other team. So I don't know. It's I know it's a hard one to call because you don't know what team even cash will line out. Do you know they have that advantage? That I know they top the group, but Clinton, you know they're. They'll want to they'll want it as much as strong. They're after losing two years, but for them it's probably just it's the next step in the ladder. They can't be looking ahead to a county final. You know, they need to just focus on Cashel and get over them first. Like, but if you look at the Clonolty team, you know, they've so many girls like Claude Quirk, Emer Lukeman, Caught, Casey, Emer Burke, you know, and then the minors that that you named as well. Like, so I think it's kind of it's kind of a tough one not to look past Clonolty. Like if they have everything in order and, you know, no injuries and they're really ready for it, you know, you'd be probably putting your money on them. And then for Drum and Anna Carty, who are you fancying in that one? Um, I sure I'd probably have to go with the, the usual drum, but you know, you'd love to see I'd love to see a game of it, like, you know, if Anna Carty, I know that's it's a good thing coming in as an underdog a lot of people go to that match and they'll just presume drum are going to win it you know they're going for four in a row they're experienced but sure you never know that's when you catch a team on the hop you know when they're complacent you know i'm sure drum will be up for it they know they know how to win these matches but you know Aero and Akarty like there's a lot of them they had a tough group battle you know but then they came up to Burgess a lot of people probably had them written off for that as well after they saw we'd be beat Thurless by you know a few points so like you know they're they obviously have in their camp they have something right you know they're confident but I'd probably be gambling on drum again so you're going with drum and Clonanti but I think by the sounds of it you're expecting two really good semi-finals yeah. and, and a big performance is out cash and Anna Carty and then obviously it's all on the day so Kira, thanks a million for joining us and uh, we look forward to Saturday's semi-finals and uh, see if you got your predictions right. No bother. Thanks a million. So before we conclude the podcast, just to run through this weekend's fixtures, senior semi-finals this Saturday, Drummond Inch versus Anna Carty at 1pm in the County Camoy Grounds in the Rag. Cash King Cormacks and Clonty Ross Moore then at 3.45pm in the County Camoy Grounds in the Rag. Um, on Sunday, we have the Junior A semi-final, Brian Bruce versus St. Rishas Feathered at 12pm. And then we also have Junior B Shield quarterfinal. That game is between Carrick Swans and Ballingarry at 2 p.m. in Carrick. And in the Rag GA grounds, we have two Junior A Shield semi finals, Ballina and Holy Cross at 2 p.m. and Templemore and Nara at 3 30 p.m. So lots of games happening again this weekend. It's going to be a, a really exciting um, last couple of weekends of the FBD Insurance Other Championships. And uh, in a couple of weeks' time, we'll know who all our county champions are. So best luck to all the teams out again this weekend. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. If you did, uh, give us a like and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.